illumined by the God who made us rich in our diversity, gathered in the name of Jesus, richer still in unity. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid varied ways sing a new church into being one in faith and love and praise. Trust the goodness of creation Trust the spirit strong within. Dare to dream the vision promised, sprung from seed of what has been. Let us bring the gifts that differ, and in splendid varied ways, sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and the hopes of every nation, bring the art of every race, weave a song of peace and justice, let it sound through time and space, let us bring the gifts that differ, and in splendid varied ways, sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Draw together at one table all the human family, shape a circle ever wider and a people ever free. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid varied ways sing a new church into being one in faith and love and praise. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My sisters and my brothers, as we gather once again to unite our lives to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, let us first call to mind our sins and ask that our Savior meet us in our deepest needs. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forsake 
not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father, And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. One night I was coming home from a meeting 
and it was later in the evening during the winter. And as I was turning to come up Division Street, on the corner of my eye, I saw something. But I kept turning, and then all of a sudden, I hear a crunch. So I look through my rearview mirror, and I see that there's a car wreck, and there's no one around. So I stop, and then I get out. I go over, and I could see that both drivers in this car wreck were shaken. No air pegs were deployed, both front ends were together. And at that moment, I really thought, well, what should I do? Well, of course, you call 911. But in my mind, in that moment, there were so many things going through my mind that I just froze. But eventually, I came to it, I realized what was going on, and we took care of the situation. But what was interesting was is that after the cops came, one person was taken away in an ambulance, they kept asking me what happened. And I said, truthfully, I don't know. All I know is that this event took place. I didn't respond the best way I thought, but praise be God, everyone, I think is okay. And I thought of this whole situation in light of what Peter went through in the gospel today because I think in some ways he knew what to say but was probably a little bit in shock of what even came out because he gave a profession of faith that did not come from him. It came from God. It was a gift. And sometimes in our lives, again, we don't even know how to respond. We don't know how to act. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, and furthermore, by the fact that we are people of faith who pray, who do good deeds, it becomes second nature. It literally becomes who we are to the point that we can respond, we can act, we can move forward. And Peter did that. And he did it in such a way that we hear that he was given a special privilege that was not given to every apostle, but just to him. He was going to be the rock because he was given a special gift a special privilege, but again, not something that he could claim as his own, but something that was truly graced upon him by God in order to bring forth better things to others. And I also bring up the experience of the car wreck because I think many of our lives feel like a car wreck. What just happened? What am I witnessing? How do I respond? What do I do? Well, brothers and sisters, this is where our faith becomes essential because a lot of times we don't know exactly what to do. But if we are praying and we are relying upon our faith in God, and constantly taking the events of our lives to prayer and really offering them over to the Lord, we may be in shock initially. We may be even to the point of distress, but the Lord will provide. The Lord will act. The Lord will bring forth good things even through our own failures and inconsistencies and missteps. And again, Peter provides a great example today. Because again, we just have to wait and allow the Lord to work through us and provide a way forward. 
Now the challenge, and also the opportunity as well, is that we don't have to wait always for the Lord to act. We can be proactive as well. And maybe that's where we need to go in our own prayer lives. Because our second reading today from St. Paul's letter to the Romans reminds us that a lot of what we're looking for is found in God. The wisdom, the judgments, the knowledge that God wants to offer us through sacred scripture, through the traditions of the church, through the actions of our leaders, truly provide a way. They give us an opportunity to respond. So yes, there's moments where we need the Lord to work through us to give us the grace, but also, brothers and sisters, we need to be very proactive as well. Because the more we focus on our faith now, the more we'll be able to navigate whatever may be in store in the future. Because I can be honest, if a car wreck ever happens again, I'll call 911 first. And then I'll pray that whatever God needs me to do, I'll do in that moment. Together now, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Acknowledging our deep faith in our Lord, who provides for our, all our needs, let us now offer these our prayers to him. For the leaders of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to work through them to bring others to Christ. We pray to the Lord. For our national and local leaders, may God inspire them to find solutions to the needs facing their communities. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, especially those struggling with chronic illnesses, may God bring them healing of mind and body. We pray to the Lord. For parents experiencing financial and emotional stress due to COVID-19 pandemic, 
May our gracious Lord assist them in providing for the needs of their families. We pray to the Lord. For students anxious about starting school this fall, may the Good Shepherd calm their turmoil and keep them free from fear. We pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may God's grace help us to affirm the dignity of every person, especially the unborn, the elderly, the refugee, and the poor. We pray to the Lord. For Roger and Elaine Bates, all the faithful departed, all the intentions listed in the book of prayers, and for all of our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, please hear these, our prayers, and answer them according to your loving will, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, your son humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sac sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, will bless Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time, you can make your spiritual communion at home. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sean. 